because we're not going live. Hello everyone, I'm here at last and hopefully we're going to have audio as well. I, oh Jerry, I really am sorry for that cock up that happened the other day when we were on a call. It's our first W3 Wisdom show and I bossed it up, completely fucked it up, left, right and centre. However, I'm very honoured to have an old friend and industry colleague all the way from Denmark joining me. Rasmus Sorensen. Now, Rasmus has very kindly agreed to join us today. He's actually on vacation in the northern <laughs> part of Denmark on his uh, 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 holiday home. Hi, Rasmus. Say hello to everyone. Hi, Jason. Hi, everybody. How are you doing? We're good. We're good. Now, for those that don't know you, Rasmus, I've known you for over a decade. I don't know how long. But, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, at least, of... Jason. At least. Yeah, yeah at least. Um, can you tell us a little bit about you and your company and the work that you do uh, at, at your firm? Sure, absolutely. Well, um, being like you, we've been in, in this, this SEO game for, for a decade and more. I think I, I did my first website in 99, so, so we've been working with this for a long time. I used to say that I've done my fair share of uh, optimal title tags over the years. So, sure. so um uh, and and my background, the, the short version is basically I, I helped start a, a, one of the first SEO companies uh, here in, in Denmark in '99, in around 2000. And, Rachel, and, and if it, I remember rightly, did you take that public? Uh, we actually did, yeah. Um, here in Scandinavia and in, in Denmark, we have a growth exchange, a uh, smaller stock exchange under Copenhagen Stock Exchange, and, and we actually took it public uh, in 2006 or seven, as far as I remember. Um, which was an interesting ride. Um, we actually sold our company to, to a larger company and, and merged all our, our activities and then started buying up uh, Scandinavian and European companies and then up to a point where it actually grew so big we took it public. And that was in 2007, I think. And in eight, uh, well, the, the crisis hit and, and everything yeah. tanked. And, um, and I got uh, basically out of the, the consulting uh, business uh, with, with a good friend of mine and we started an affiliate business and, and ran them that for, for a few years actually. And with some, some uh, kind of uh, good success, uh, we had ups and downs as, as everyone else. And in, uh, in a few years ago, I, I got an offer from, from the company I'm employed with now, which is AdCore uh, here in Denmark. And, and I'm a senior SEO specialist and, and doing um, all things SEO. Back to your roots. I remember when you uh, went public on the uh, stock exchange over there and it was one of the very first SEO companies anywhere in the go globe to become public and listed like that. And uh, it would have been my black cat literally being doffed to you over there. Um, it, it was a big news and very well deserved. It was. And uh, your, yourself and the affiliate work that, that you were doing with... Uh, uh, um, Oh, God, I've got your business partner's name, Soren. That was uh, Torben Lundskart. Torben, of course it was yeah. Torben. Torben. He was yes, Torben, and yeah. an old time, an old timer in the game as well. Yeah, 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 very much so, very much so. Um, and so that that was, you know, when we're talking about talent within international SEO, Rasmus and Torben especially are really, really up there at the pinnacle. And you're working with <laughs> AT Core. That's atcore.dk, is that right? That's right. Yeah, it's actually um, a abbreviation of, of attract, convert, retain. So it is at core.dk. Yeah. And what can you tell me about the agency? Well, it's it's uh, one of the larger agencies uh, here in Denmark as well. Uh, at least that's what we, we pride ourselves on. Um, um, and when we do a lot of other stuff than than uh, SEO, uh, we do the whole attract, convert, and retain. So so we have a huge SEM team and, and an SEO team. We have some conversion rate uh, optimization teams. Uh, we have designers. Um, we do a lot of marketing automation with Makito and, and some of the tools as well. So it's the uh, full service uh, digital agency. Um, and let me say, if there's anyone that's listening that's in the Scandinavian markets, I know that uh, 
my roots, as you know, are in the online gambling industry. And there's a lot of gaming right. companies based and market towards the uh, the Scandi territories, especially Denmark specifically. But uh, right. we can never ignore Sweden or Finland. Or any, any oh, of no, yeah. especially especially Sweden, uh, I'd yeah. say, within the gambling industry. They're, they're pretty, there's, there's a lot there. They're pretty cutting edge out there. Well, they are, they are. And some of those big firms, if any, any of them ever need SEO work within there from... Probably, in my opinion, the best of the best. Um, Rasmus <laughs> is the guy in AT Core, at Core is the uh, firm to speak to. But enough of the spam. Enough right, of the spam. right. Um, it, it's good to do spam because, you know, that's where our roots are, or my roots are at least. Your corporate white hat now. Um, but. Uh, uh, um, <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> and uh, you, you are, you are. Um, oh yeah, that's that's legitimate. We've adapted with the industry as it's changed over the years. And uh, um, my roots may be in the gaming and the spammier areas, um, but but I don't spam like I did in the old days. None of us do. The industry has changed. The algos right, have point. changed as well. Um, you know, we remember back in the day. We could uh, throw up a site and uh, be ranking within a matter of minutes, whether it be pre-Google days when backlinks didn't oh, yeah. really matter so much, or even right. the, the earlier days, you know, the turn of the century with Google, um, you fire in a few thousand links and you're ranking within minutes. They were great. Right, right. But those days have changed, not necessarily better or worse, it's just different. Um, it's it changed, absolutely. Yeah, you're um, right. I remember Alta Vista and being able to uh, actually reverse engineer like like a keyword density or prominence, and, and uh, once you hit the sweet spot there, it was fun. It was really and fun. The traffic was good. You know, even in the days, you know, we, we had Yahoo sold this week for oh, five, yeah, yeah. five billion bucks or something. Um, right. And which, which to me sounds like a great load of money, but in practical terms, it's nothing compared to their previous value. Um, Yahoo was a dominant, right. real big search engine way back then. It was, like, it was. Out of Vista. Um, that was the big daddy before the big daddy of all of them came in Google. And, oh, yeah. uh, uh, um, and they ended up being bought by Yahoo, of course. Um, um, yeah, what... didn't Yahoo pretty much uh, screw everything up at one point? They, they bought Yahoo, they bought the uh, Vista, they bought Ink to me, they, they bought Overture, everything, all everyone, the technology. Exactly, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, uh, the days of taking those overture feeds and uh, using them to uh, <laughs> uh, 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 acquire a, a, a greater quality of content for the web, in reaching the web with those content exactly. feeds, was great. They were, it was good days, and they it were was. really. Do you remember a guy? And he may even be listening. I don't remember, but uh, a guy called Satish J Kumar. Do you remember Satish? Yeah, the name rings a bell. Um... He was working for. I'm trying to remember now. I think it was eSpotting. Who were taking right. your feeds directly and then reselling on, and Satish yeah. was the one of the primary reasons I think for a, a proliferation of uh, a, a directory style sites ranking so effectively because that was the yeah. days when you can build your own page rank, and so all you needed was big, big quantity of content to create the pages, and you can funnel it internally with just a sprinkling of links coming from outside, and uh, J. Right. J uh, uh, Satish J. Kumar really took those feeds and distributed them far and wide. They were good fun. I remember them having a, a liberal view on, on how you use the, the feeds. Um, I, I'm not sure that will fly today, but yeah, we used the, especially the e-spotting feeds and then to some extent the overture feeds to, in, in creative ways, in creative ways. Exactly. They were, it was good fun times, good fun times. But times have changed. And, Absolutely. Uh, look, I know you're, you're, a, you're a customer. Is that okay to say? That. Sure. Yeah, Absolutely, you're you're yeah. a customer of our product, the domain name, um, and uh, mm -hmm. a very good one at that. So thank you for all of your cash and your clients' cash. It's very welcome. Um, yeah. well. <laughs> uh, um, but <laughs> I, I clearly use domains for, for, for link building reasons. But from an SEO perspective in the corporate space that you are, how do you find link building nowadays? Well, as you, as you mentioned initially, I, I think uh, things have de definitely changed um, for a lot of reasons. One of them, them being that that webmasters, in particular, are, are being aware that that uh, requests coming in for for links um, has a purpose. I think ten years ago, you would kind of feel honored when somebody actually wrote you an email asking if you link to them, and, and that's definitely changed. It's it's very difficult for the the low level outreach link building to actually have an effect. Um, um, unless you, you do it uh, in the content marketing terms as, as we kind of use today. So let me ask in a content marketing, you're out there, 
you do this in every day as part of the team attracting converting retaining what content marketing do you see working well nowadays, Rasmus, especially within the North European marketplaces that you operate? That's actually a good question. Um, I think like like in everything else, uh, press and, and, uh, and, and actually reaching out uh, through like the press, the original press channels um, like, like um, the newspapers and magazines and stuff works well if, if you have an, a story or that being either um, something controversial or, or groundbreaking, but but it, it is a matter of, of um, trying to get through the noise, I think. But but doing it, uh, having a good product, having um, doing some content that actually delivers value. I know it's it's an old horse beaten to death here, but but that actually is it is some of the stuff that works because I think webmasters have been more aware of. of um, of the ideas behind outreaching and and and, sure. and 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 Google has done some some fear mongering in that uh, respect as well, um, trying to persuade people not to link to everything. And so I, I think in general, um, webmasters have become more aware of, of the value of links and, and hence making it uh, more difficult to actually acquire the good ones. And, and I agree. By the way, I I, I think that for great outreach to occur, um, we are talking about in a more traditional style of public relations with a great story, with something controversial, um, or it may be a combination of both, but it needs to be a story that itself is worthwhile of being in the national press, being on TV. And where I see content marketing failing, which is most of the time, to be frank, is because hey, we've got a new product and it's the same as that product over there and please mm. link to us. Um, right, the, right. The unique style of creating something interesting is, is what's required. Because again, whether it be the newspapers, whether it be broadcast, whether it be someone spamming Facebook with a video feed like I am at the moment, um, <laughs> it, it needs to be something engaging and worthwhile because the producers of that content, the newspapers, the TV, etc., are looking for their viewers to be entertained not so much exactly. necessarily educated but the entertainment i think is probably more important and if we can Good get point. both together you get a great balance there so i think it actually has been been also a questioning of, of maybe even taking a few steps back as you mentioned when when we had alta vista or we had all the web or we had yahoo willing to me for that matter it was a matter of, of content and links and, and a link a link was a link um, it, it's not the case anymore. It's 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 much harder to get that link that actually works. Um, uh, and and so we, we I think that link building also has, has gone a, a few steps back in, in terms of being regular all time PR. It, it like you mentioned, doing a press release is not enough. Uh, we have a new product, yada yada. Nobody cares. Sure. What's the benefits of the product? So what can you do with it? Why is it new? Why is it groundbreaking? So I think good old marketing and PR is is is, is highly effective, but also more complicated and a lot more expensive. It's changed. The industry has changed. It's not necessarily got better or got worse. It's different. And, it is. Uh, it uh, is. Um, I agree completely with you in what you're saying about uh, trying to find that unique spin that makes it worthy of that news agency to pick up is key. But. Agreed. What else can we do? We know that link building is probably the mother and father of all SEO nowadays. Um, the old saying, content is king. Well, I'm not sure if that was ever true, um, but I do think that it's probably more relevant nowadays. It's a prerequisite, maybe. It's the queen to the links being the king. Um, right. And so what when, when you gain a new client and you're thinking and brainstorming with your team and your colleagues these stories you're trying to put together... So you can gain those links from the traditional media. What thought process do you go through? How do you? I'm looking around. I've got um, I've got a phone. Okay, so I've got a phone. Um, you've got a new phone client. Um, imagine <laughs> that Ericsson and Nokia would actually reinvent themselves. Great Scandinavian companies. Um, <laughs> right. And, and, and they'd actually produce a device worth having. Um, and, 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 you know, the, the old days. Um, other than the story of a great old company reinventing itself, which in itself is probably enough to get the coverage. Mm. But if they were that startup trying to follow in the footsteps of Nokia or Ericsson or whoever, it doesn't really matter here. How would you, what is the process that you go through with your team? Try and think of a reason to gain that coverage from the traditional media. That's a, that's a good question. Um, 
selling or, or, or delivering something as boring uh, as a phone uh, is extremely difficult. Uh, if, if you only want to talk about the phone and, and what features you have. I, I think just on the top of my head, I, I would probably have a discussion around uh, use cases for the phone or, or engaging some users and, and some user-generated content. Um, trying to persuade people to use the phone in, in awkward situations, in, in uh, filming themselves, doing images, doing some social media coverage. Um, now we mentioned the Scandinavian companies like Carlsberg is pretty good, the beer company in Denmark is pretty good at, at, at creating buzz around something that has nothing to do with their, their selling beer. It's, it, whether it's sponsoring uh, the, the European Cup or whatever. Um, so I'll definitely go down that route and, and try to uh, think of, of secondary links in, in terms of news, not, not as much as, as related to the phone, but more the use of it or, or, or doing some sure, campaigns sure. I around. agree completely with what you're saying. So now let me say that we don't have someone, a great big brand, but, but they're, whether it be affiliate marketing, whether it be a smaller merchant, who's operating and starting online. And they don't have the budget for TV sponsorship uh, uh, um, or or don't truthfully have a great backstory. Um, it's just, you know, a, you and me, a couple of guys that's saying that we want to do some affiliate marketing, we'll create a great site. That's a prerequisite to have the ranking opportunity. Right. But right. what should right. we do? We don't, here's my view. We've got a couple, mm -hmm. we're a couple of guys. We've built this great site. Um, we know that the site is more than good enough, but we don't have the ability to have the story for getting that great press coverage. We have nothing to lose. We've got a website. That's it. Yep, there is yep. no concern about the moral argument or the risk because <laughs> there is no risk. We've got a website and nothing else. It either ranks and we get some traffic and therefore some conversions, or but we don't have an existing business to protect or conserve or to worry about. Right, that's a that's a big big point, isn't it? That's a huge difference in having a well-known brand you have to work with, or, or your own site, for that matter. Where exactly where you mentioned, you have no risk, and I would I would definitely push the envelope a lot further on a site that that I own or have control over, and then and, and aware of the risks about. So, so I do. I, I, no, go ahead. Sorry, go on, Rich. Yeah, sure. I, I would, uh, if you ask me directly, I think the first thing I'll do is set up a TDN account. <laughs> Not to spam anyone here, uh, but but um, uh, in honest, in all honesty, I think that's that's a great tool and a great product for for finding uh, domains that actually carry some value, be it SEO links or, or even traffic. Um, um, and the cost of, 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 of getting the domains and setting up and hosting them and actually start generating links and traffic is is. It's minimal compared to, to, like you mentioned, a TV campaign and stuff. Well, look, 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 that's very, very kind of you to say so. I'm <laughs> clearly biased because we sure, myself sure, and but... Richard, my business partner, we own uh, the TDN. Um, and actually, mm. I'm going to take this opportunity because we're, we're 20 minutes in and we've had a good chat. And you've just promoted TDN for us. I'm going to cut to an ad <laughs> break. And actually, <laughs> the ad's going to be Fred telling us about TDN. So bear with us while I click the right buttons. Where is it? Where is it? You know, it's really good if we were polished and an, a great organisation would have all of this taken care of. But the well, truth is, I've just found it. There we go. We're cutting All right, over. push it. This is Fred. He's a busy SEO. But Fred hates link building. And outsourcing it is too expensive, low quality, and time consuming. Fred needs an answer, a scalable link solution. The domain name has just the thing. Fred wants powerful domains, scalability, great prices, speed of action, and huge data. Whether 10, 1,000 or 1 million sites, you choose your domains. Add them and then, in 24 hours or less, your network is complete. It's that simple. Exclude the bad words, include the good and just search. Then, click. Through an easy interface that's quick to use. With vast data. It's a network in a flash. It's 
the fastest link building program available. It's truly international and the final cog in your SEO machine. Saving you money, building your profit, and launching your business to the moon. It's a thumbs up from Fred. Come sign up now with a special offer with a free trial. And we're back. Thank you, everyone, for uh, 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 letting us have an ad break there. And Rasmus, thank you, too, for promoting TVN. Um, every now and again up there, or there, roughly, um, where are we? There, there we go, about there. There's a thing popping along that uh, we'll, we'll be promoting TVN as well. Um, but but put that aside. I, look, I'm, a, I'm of an agreement that link building related to domain names and the power of those historical domain names um, and the links that are out there and the age they have helps massively, but I'm biased. Um, other than <laughs> TDN, other than traditional content marketing with great stories, and we were going no risk. We, we don't mm. have anything to lose. We don't need to conserve or protect. Right, right, right. What's the dirty stuff that's out there nowadays, Rasmus? Well, as you, as you mentioned initially, I'm, I'm pure whitehead now, Jason, so, so I, I really wouldn't know. But... <laughs> okay, okay. That was unfair well, no, of me no, to say that. It was unfair. I, I, was unfair. I think a, a good place to actually start researching some of the stuff is, is also through some of the, like the Facebook groups and, and, and the network. Um, both you and I are, are, are members of, of a few um, even closed uh, discussion groups where we actually share some of the stuff. Um, well, one of them, actually, I'm going to give a promotion to, and actually, I'm, I'm going to ask if I, the core isn't a closed group. There are no, absolutely not. No, no, it's, um, it's uh, all free, and, and you can everyone can sign up. Sure. Well, let me actually give a promotion to the core. It's th3core.com. It is a forum. Right. It may seem quiet on the outside. Let me be clear about that. But there's mm -hmm. a hidden inner section. We don't accept, and this isn't my group. I just happen to be fortunate enough to be a member there. Um, but, but if there's something about you, you will be invited to the inside. But you need to partake on the outside. Um, right. It's some of the oldest and wisest people I've ever met old being the uh, operative word for many of them, um, <laughs> myself included, to be fair, um, uh, uh, people within the SEO industry ever. I actually don't think there's anyone there with under 20 years or so, approximately, under their belt. It's definitely, we count the experience in decades, not combined, but individually. Right, um, right. Everyone, really, really experienced people yeah. in there, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, and, and some uh, of them don't do much like like online anymore, but, but still have some great views on how to do business and, and how to sure. structure your life and stuff. So it's it's a, it's far beyond SEO, but it, it has a touch of SEO since it's all the, the old guys, the, the core. Um, yeah, indeed. <laughs> indeed. And for any of those that have been around search for quite a few years, there have been many names that you'll remember. Um, I'm not going to say the names because because many of them are very private and uh, uh, keep themselves to themselves. They'd never end up on this Facebook thing, for example. Um, exactly, yeah. exactly. However, the talent that is available there and ready to help and assist is amazing. So if you were to go to, I'll give you another plug again, that's the core, but spelt th3core.com. Um, exactly. Please sign up. It's a great site, and there's a lot of, experience to assist you if you're not there to spam um because oh, these yeah. are some of the oldest spammers out there and they'll stay yeah. in a heartbeat <laughs> you'll uh, get the hammer if you do that's that's for yeah, sure yeah, but, yeah. but and, on the other hand the the the, the band is, is pretty wide so so uh, we can take a, a lot of crap in there as well yeah, yeah. and and if you want to discuss lawnmowers or, or the best coffee making machine i think we have a couple of threads for that as well and even down to losing my fat belly there's even yeah. ongoing threads about fitness and health which i yeah. purposely stay completely out of <laughs> because i've worked for 44 years growing this i'm not going to give it up without a fight <laughs> <laughs> There we are. Right good now. point, good point. Oh, so look, well, that was nostalgic. Let, let me yep, ask yeah. you another question, Rasmus. Sure. I've worked so heavily within the gambling industry 
uh, uh, for so many years now and still we have clients and uh, I'm very happy to say we have clients in, in the gaming industry. The gaming and gambling industry has been very good to me for a, you know many, many years. Um, but the changes within Europe um, uh, uh, have been vast. Um, regulations come in. Originally back in 2005, the UK government gave a piece of legislation saying, look, we're going to legalise online gambling. We're going to bring all our regulation up to date. And then under the principle was that under the freedom of uh, uh, movement of goods and services within Europe, um, everyone was allowed to trade. If you're legal in the UK, you can be legal throughout Europe. Well, the EU courts and governments made different decisions and it's fragmented with individual regulation within different countries and taxation that comes with that. In Denmark especially, Danske Spill was the national monopoly within there yeah, and, yeah. Uh, still it still pretty much is uh, yeah it's everything it's everything pretty much but let, let me see i don't know if you and i i should have spoken with you beforehand so i don't know what marketplace you have clients in or not and so if there's a conflict of interest just tell me and i'll stop mm -hmm. but i've got to cover no. gambling do you have yeah no worries can no we worries speak there. about the gambling markets do you have sure, clients absolutely. within there within within no scan no no clients okay no plan, so no. at the moment, if there were to be a Scandinavian face and especially Danish, because you are Danish, but clearly any of the Scandi markets, whether it be Sweden, especially Sweden, you know, can't argue mm -hmm. with the sheer size of the country. Um, right. Um, were to be looking for assistance that the at core um, uh, attract convert retain dot DK would be the firm to, to speak to. But. But from the link building aspects and the gaming space, gaming is one of those. When I say gaming, I really mean gambling. Right, um, right. When we're in the gambling space, it's one of those areas that that it, it's a white legitimate white hat organisation in legitimate licensed regulated marketplaces, but is considered still by many as one of the darker and filthier areas of online marketing and business mm. in general. I don't agree with that, but I'm, I know I'm biased. So if you were to gain, uh, uh, say, Denska Spill uh, uh, as, a, as a client um, and you were to sit down with them. Now, Denska Spill actually is not a very fair organisation to, to put forward there because they already have everybody already with them. And actually, oh, yeah, as an, yeah. an organisation, they're quite conservative due to their mm -hmm. historical nature of being government owned, etc. Um, exactly. But, but, but how would we go out with... If you and I were to get on the phone to go, look, we've got this new client. We're going to be partnering together at Core and uh, 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 and Jason or, or TDN, and we're going to be looking at link building routes to deliver the rankings that we want here. But we want to do this as clean and corporate, you know, the traditional white hat SEO ways. Other than the content, which probably is the fundamental principle that we're going to try and build for for the reason for the press to, to get involved. What other ways could we look at, at promotions, whether it be not just SEO, but, but traffic in general purposes? Do you think that, uh, is there something that, that, that I'm not aware of? I want to learn from your experience and wisdom here, and specifically with the, the geolocational aspects and talent that you bring in the Danish market. That's, that's, a, that's a very good question. Speaking of, of Danske Spill, which has been around forever right. and, and I think have done a lot as well um, in, in that regard, is again, I'd, I'd go the, uh, maybe with, as you mentioned, the more controversial way of, of, of trying to, to generate some press, um, that be some campaigns. Um, we had had a, a huge discussion here whether or not to legalize gambling. And the argument is a lot of the money coming in uh, to Danske Spill is actually being used uh, on, on local sports clubs. And so so a lot of the money is actually going out to, to charity and helping local uh, sports clubs uh, uh, buy uh, all the stuff, the equipment they need. So, so a lot of the money is actually going back into sports, um, which is, is not the case if you're a private uh, gambling or gaming firm. Um, and, and and that's just on the top of my head. I, I might use use that as, as an argument, I which they already done. 
I think it's a really great way to go is promotion, promoting the social awareness and the responsibility right. for the community. And, and they've done that a lot and then comparing like like Bit24 and all the other UK based or or international gaming companies yeah. and trying to compare what what where the money actually goes. And I think they took it up to a point where they look at this fat cat getting all the money if, if you gamble here, but if, if you use uh, the Lenska's bill, some of the money will go back actually into the, the sports clubs and stuff. Yeah, and I um, think that it's a very hard to compete with a de facto monopoly, but not just a de facto monopoly, a de facto monopoly that gives back to the community, whether it yeah. be directly via the taxation that they pay or the rewards that they give to the local clubs, supporting kids, whether it be playing football or whatever it may well be. Right. Um, what we and I think actually the the arts and and, and it's, it's not up to par compared to to some of the UK. So you get better arts uh, playing other places. Yes. So I I definitely not go that route. I, I wouldn't talk to like the the hardcore gamers, but more like the mom and pops out there that actually wants to buy. Uh, uh, doing some some football matches in the weekend or doing the lottery and stuff. Um, Let me ask for a, a related question. This isn't really gambling related, just in any industry that, that you're operating with. There's a large agency. I'm sure many of your clients would have TV advertising as well. Do you see an yeah, uptick yeah. in traffic when there are adverts running? Absolutely, absolutely. So there's direct and real correlation between TV advertising, traditional print advertising, etc., and the search traffic. I'm not sure about the print, uh, okay. but but the I think TV, the, the sure. uh, yeah the live the on demand uh, feature, be it TV or radio, um, definitely has an effect. Um, so let me ask uh, you another question then related to that. Clearly, that will deliver the brand related searches and direct traffic. Just type in. Do you mm -hmm. see any uptick in generic rankings when there's that offline media? Uh, uh, work that goes on there, i.e. the principle being people search more for a brand, the brand is more important, let's rank it for more stuff. Or is that bullshit? You know, is, what do you see? I, I can't put my finger on it, but I've definitely seen cases where I think it was even Randall Moss that, that did the test of, mm. of, of actually seeing if, if click-through rates in a short uh, amount of time actually increased rankings, which, which, as I remember, did, but they quickly dropped back. But it would make sense that, that if a... Uh, a brand is, is uh, suddenly searched a lot uh, on, on a brand term, it will get a better ranking or even uh, related brand terms um, for the period that people are actually searching. Um, if I were Google, I, 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 I'd definitely use that as a metric. Uh, but I think actually that's a really good point. It's like, first off, let me say I agree completely with what you said. I've seen the uplift when there is TV on demand, uh, 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 you're broadcasting to an audience at one time. I see it less with print, although I have seen an uptick, but it's been much smaller. It's more obvious when you know there's a TV show right. and advert going on at one point, and boom, you see it all yeah. at once. And right. the same for radio. To be fair to radio here, it's still, you know, when we're driving our cars and going to work, whatever it may be, is uh, TV's much more awkward to consume than uh, radio. So the, the, the viewerships are definitely there. And I have seen real and meaningful traffic increases. And I've seen ranking increases for the generic stuff come as well. Um, right. But, but, but how, if we wanted to be more aggressive, and would we look at taking that principle and using it without having the budget for producing TV commercials. Just the production can be as expensive as the actual advertising fees. Right, um, right. Uh, um, a good example I actually realized is, is with my wife's blog. She, she, for a few years, was a professional blogger and, and in the mommy blogging business. And she actually did a site that, that where she actually wrote just about uh, what is blogging and how can you make money from it and so on. And then this uh, well-known other female blogger was, was actually in a TV show that has nothing to do with blogging. It was like, guess guess who lives here kind of, of TV show. Sure. So they went round in an apartment and they, they, they tried to guess who she was. At the end, she revealed the real who she was. And and, uh, and they asked her what she did for a living. And she said she was a professional blogger. And then my wife's site ranked number one professional blogging here in Denmark. And the traffic exploded the wow. next few hours. Because everybody wanted to know uh, what, what, how does a blogger make money and, and what is professional blogging. So the secondary effect was, was huge. Not, not related to this blogger, but, but like a, a theme or, or a thing that, that actually uh, went out to the public. And they didn't know what it was, so they searched heavily for it. And then she got a lot of traffic. And then they rerun this, this show a couple of months later, and the same thing happened in the afternoon. The traffic just spiked 
on Amazing. unrelated searches. Amazing. Which has nothing to do with the TV show or, or, or her for that matter, but it was a, a genuine interest in blogging, which she, she could be, definitely benefit from. And actually, I've seen very similar, at least uh, 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 the evidence shows that it was similar, with TV shows that we get here. We get a show called Dragon's Den here. Which right, is, we, you know, and it's, we do it's that as well, yes. Yeah. serialised all over the world. It was a British thing. It's gone to America. I think I call it something different, but but the principle yeah. is the same. Um, Often when these guys are presenting, whether they get money or not, there I am, I'm watching the TV show and I've got my laptop on my lap and I'm typing away. And you try and find these guys' sites and every single time they're down, purely because yeah, yeah. I can presume that the influx of everyone watching, watching in the nation has hit their servers all at once. So my takeaway from that is if you know something's going to happen on TV, on radio, etc., beef up your servers because it's that amazing opportunity that you're throwing away if the people right. can't actually get to your site to see. Whether oh, it yeah. Be oh, yeah. It's one of the first things we ask as clients, if they actually plan on, on running a huge campaign that yeah. that be banners or whatever it is, and are you actually able to handle the traffic, which I've seen so many times that they're not. Um, it's which is just world, makes world. me cringe. It's like you've you've done all the work, you've spent all the money, and now your service down. It's I, like... I know exactly. I'll, I'll give you a, I'll give you a very quick story. Years ago, I headed up some online marketing, specifically SEO, for a company known as Party Gaming. They've merged and changed names a couple of times since, mm. but we ended up ranking. I'm very glad I did because it was my job. Uh, number one around the world for phrases like poker, online poker, etc. Yeah. Um, oh. But at the time, we'd pulled out of the American market because it was named after the unlawful internet gaming enforcement act that uh, uh, um, although it wasn't illegal to have online gambling it was illegal for the banks to move money about so anyway they had this so site partypoker.com we were ranking number one in the world for poker in google.com and we weren't taking any players there was no so it was actually a drain on the business with the traffic right. that was coming in and no one could yeah. sign up and become a customer it's oh, if only imagine yeah. how much it would be but anyway look Rasmus, we've been chatting now for about 40 minutes and I've loved every second. The information you've shared with the audience and myself has been amazing. Um, I want to thank okay. you for your time today. It really has been a privilege to speak to you and to gain your wisdom in, in these two Always a pleasure. About. Well, look, let's do it again sometime. But before we go, before I go, mm -hmm. let me ask you to just give a plug about at core.com. Uh, attract, convert, retain. Um, tell us a, a bit more about yourselves and a reminder for everyone, if you are in Denmark specifically, but anywhere within the sort of Scand Scandi area, that uh, um, this is the firm you should be speaking to. So, Rasmus, over to you. <laughs> I think you, you did a pretty good job there, Jason. I, I couldn't have done it uh, uh, much better myself. I think one of the things that we pride ourselves on doing is we, we actually in the, the med medical uh, technology industry, is, is some of our expertise. We, we do have some, some huge Fortune 500 con uh, companies in, in that regard. So so in, in everything medical um, is, is something we're, we're really good at. And, and that's actually the international. It's not just... That's international. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah that's but, but, global clients, yeah. Um, I know one of your clients, and I'm quite well, actually. My, my, <laughs> my other half is... Uh, plastered now so our boys plastered all over their billboard or actually their, their right, building right. in copenhagen uh, uh oh yes she's, she's everywhere here yeah, yeah definitely you yeah. can't move more so, but uh, enough of that look rasmus on extend the virtual hand and to say thank you for your time today it really has been a privilege and an honor thank you i'm gonna well it's my honor completely jason thanks for giving me the opportunity um, Your was I, pleasure I look... Thank you very much. Look, I look forward to the next time. But for Me now, too. for everyone that's tuning in, hopefully there's lots of you. Um, but we'll see you soon. Cheers. Bye-bye. All right. Cheers. Bye.